Hey everybody, if you're a game dev, get ready for a new game dev superpower. Today I want to introduce you to how to use the debugger and how it can save you a ton of time. This is a skill that I learned about a year into game development. I was dealing with a big issue, writing a bunch of debug logs as I normally did, and another developer who had a lot more experience came over and said, what the hell are you doing? try this out instead it'll save you a lot of time and ever since i've been using this as a standard practice let's start with what a debugger is now if you're just using visual studio code without the debugger plugin installed you may not have ever seen this before and if you've never seen it demoed you probably haven't as well but visual studio jetbrains writer and visual studio code with the plugin all support the ability to attach to your code and actually view and run through the execution line by line see all of the date and this data not date and the state of everything all in your code editor and even modify and change that code. So instead of having a debug log for things, we can actually step through and see exactly what everything is. And let's just dive into an example to see how useful it can be. Here I've got a simple first person shooter game. It's got some creatures that'll crawl up the wall and I can shoot at them to make them die and give myself some points and some bullets down at the bottom. As creatures come up, I should be able to click and shoot. And normally what I do is shoot them with this, this gun right here. But for now testing, I'll just click and shoot and run through it and kill them all. But if I click on these big ones, notice that my bullets are going away, but they're not actually taking any damage. So let's say I wanted to debug this and figure out why are these guys not taking any damage? First thing I'll do is pause. Now I'm gonna go over to my code. Now the code to deal with shooting is in this gun controller. It's actually just named gun controller JSON, trying out a couple different things and imported another one. But it's not underneath this get mouse button, that just spray functionality, that's not what we care about. It's right here in the get mouse button down. The first thing we do is just tell the light gun to fire and update its little LEDs. Then we go through and set the ammo and reload and then update the ammo UI. And then we do a debug draw array so we can see a ray in the inspector. And then down here we do a ray cast and then we check to see if we hit something. We check to see if we have a projectile to launch and if we have an enemy and so on. So let's say I wanted to figure out why this isn't working. What I'll do is right here in Rider, click here on line 57. Notice how this little red dot appears. You'll see the same thing in Visual Studio Code once you have the plugin in or in your Visual Studio, or you just go grab Writer. It's free to install and free to use for most people. So you click that little dot there and then hit Attach to Unity Editor up here, or you can hit My Hotkey is F5 to do it. If you use the Writer defaults, that's the hotkey. If you use a different one, you can find out what it is or just hit that attached to Unity Editor. Now, if you have multiple Unity Editors running, it should attach to the one that this project was open for, but it can sometimes get confusing if you have multiple editors running and you have multiple code editors running, depending on how good your code editor is at picking the right one, it might attach to the wrong thing. So just be wary of that. Anyway, once it's attached, and any, it won't happen in a normal situation. Once it's attached, we jump back over to the Unity Editor. I'm going to unpause and then I'm going to click on them again. Now you'll see that all of a sudden, I, without me doing anything, the game has paused itself and stopped execution, jumped back over to the code editor and highlighted this line right here, line 57. It's now in yellow or with a yellow highlight around it. It's got an arrow here saying that it's going to be on this line. It's going to execute this one next. And I'd even if you see the highlight there, or the tooltip says I can drag it to skip the code. So I can actually drag and go down and skip right above or skip down to the next line if I want and drag it up here and then I can hit the hotkey F10. Now when I hit that it'll step down to the next line You see the arrow went down here to line 59 and remember it stopped on 57 because that's where I put this dot. If I put a dot down somewhere else and let it continue on it'll actually continue on to that dot as well. You'll see that in a moment though. Let's continue. Now I want to show you if I put my mouse over the ammo you can see that it says that I have one ammo left. So that shouldn't require a reload. This if statement should fail, which it did. If I hit F10 there, it steps over. Ammo minus minus, if I hit F10 again, it's gonna go down to zero. Then it's gonna update the UI. 
It's going to draw a ray. It's going to do the get the ray right here. It's going to do a ray cast. It hits something. It's going to check that if there is a projectile prefab, there's not one assigned. So it's going to skip over that. Let's minimize this bottom part. And then it's going to find the enemy. And it's going to, oh, look at that. I hit F10 a couple times. It actually skipped over. There was not an enemy found. Now, why wasn't there an enemy found? Well, let's take a look at what we've got here for data. So I can see that I've got a enemy that's null. I've got a hit that was from our ray cast hit. And the hit has the collider and it's a head collider. Let's um, hit F5 now and let the game continue on. So I'm going to hit F5. I'm going to go back into game and I'm going to click on one of these monsters that I can kill. So I'm going to hit, now I've clicked on one of those robots or spiders that I can kill. I hit F10 a couple times. See, oh, it's actually going to force me to reload because my ammo ran out. Now, I don't want ammo to keep running out while I'm debugging. So let's skip ahead a little bit and show you how you can actually modify data at runtime as well. So if I want to change the amount of ammo that I have inside my debugger, there should be an area where you can execute or evaluate expressions. Down here in Rider, you can see it says evaluate expressions with breakpoints available. So I can just click down here and type underscore ammo and it'll give me the IntelliSensor autocomplete equals. And I'll just give it like a thousand ammo. I got to add the semicolon and you see now my ammo has updated to a thousand at runtime. So the next time I click, I don't have to worry about ever running out of ammo. So I click on another one. You'll see that I stopped at that same point and I don't like this breakpoint anymore. So I'm going to remove that breakpoint by clicking on it. And I'm going to scroll down to the one right here where I'm getting the enemy line 88. Click and then hit F5. F5 allows you to continue execution. You can also look here for whatever your hotkey is, but I'm just going to hit F5 because that's the default hotkey. And it'll bring me down and here I can see that I hit a collider and here I actually hit a box collider that's the NPC and this time I get an enemy. Okay, so the difference here is that when I'm clicking on the the guys that I can kill, I'm getting a box collider. When I'm clicking on the other ones, it looks like I'm getting a head object. And it looks like, oh, there, there was a breakpoint in the death part. So let's click on one of these again that I can't kill one more time. Just check. Yep, it's a head collider. And that means that I'm probably just getting the wrong collider or perhaps I could change this code to get the parent. Let's go look in the inspector real quick. So I hit a five again and we'll just pause and find one of these Oxidiseus things all from the Proto Factor pack. I'll, I'll link that down below, by the way. All these monsters are from his and uh, a couple other packs in this pack project. I'll, I'll link as well if anybody wants to check them out. But this guy right here, if I look, I'm going to guess that he has a collider called Head. He was working on headshot stuff. I, I head colliders right here. And these head colliders, if I go find them, are slightly in front, it looks like, of the body. So what I need to do is either remove these head colliders or make them actually work as a headshot so they can take extra damage or change the code so that it can read the parent or get the enemy from the parent. Here, we'll just switch it to get component in parent. Stop debugging. Got to hit that red button. And it's a very important thing when you're debugging. If you don't stop debugging, the compiler won't recompile. So your game actually won't update the code. You need to make sure that you stop debugging and click back over to the editor. I'll stop playing and we'll play again. And now let's try killing one of those guys and see what happens. By the way, what's going to happen is we're going to run into one more bug that we can debug and see one more interesting thing. Also, while we're waiting to get in there, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you got questions about this or things about the debugger you're interested in, drop a comment down below as well. I'm kind of curious to see what people might want to learn more about with the debugger. So here we go. If I click and kill these guys, they should be playing a death animation before they disappear. We can see that they're all just kind of instantly poofing. These guys actually take shots, though, so I can click and and hit them. But there's now an, an issue where they're not playing the death animation. So let's see what we can do to debug that.
So the first thing I want to do is just look at my death method or my die method. And one thing you'll notice here is that I do have some logs here. I've got a log for if it's dying and then another log here that it made it past that alive. So let's go check and see if those are in the logs. This is something that is still important to do. I want to teach you how to use the debugger, but it's also important to remember that logs are helpful. It's good to use them as well and kind of mix it up. So let's type it in. Dying is there. It's definitely getting killed. If I clear out the log and I kill one, you can see that it's dying. It's getting past that alive check on every one of them. So let's add a breakpoint here and see what's actually going on. Why is it not staying dead or why is it not playing that animation? So I'm going to go back into the game and click. And since it's there, it attached. And here I'm at the point from my previous breakpoint. I'm going to actually click and remove it. But let's just make sure we get an enemy. We got an enemy. So we'll step in. I'll hit F10. F10 again to get down to this enemy dot hit line. Now I'm going to show you another cool hotkey, which is F11. What F11 will do is actually take you into a method. So I hit F11 and it'll step into that hit method and show us everything that hit is doing. So hit is first doing a little log to show what our new health is, decrement or our old health is, decrementing the health, playing an explosion. That was that little green particle and the red one we just saw a second ago. And then it's calling die. So die is definitely getting called like we already knew from our log though. And you can hit F5 or I just hit F11 to continue in. I'll hit F5 though to go down to the next line. We see our, we've got our log entry, the other log, and then the nav mesh getting disabled. And then we set the bool and then we should wait for five seconds and then increment our score. But you can see that it looks like we didn't wait for five seconds. It looks like we just instantly are down here on the destroy. So let's go drag this line up here and we'll add a breakpoint here on the destroy. Let's just make sure that that's actually doing what it looks like we're doing. So now that we're at the point where we're setting the bullets at F5 again, is it, yep, it's instantly getting down to this destroy part and go up, drag it down and see it, it's happening again. So the issue is definitely in here. And if we look, Right here at the little yellow lines, there, here it's warning us of two things. One, it wants us to not use just a string here that we should we should cache this. But here it's saying that it's actually not awaited because uh, we don't have the await keyword here. So if we add that in, it's going to resolve the issue. Now you might say, hey, we should have just caught that anyway because it had a yellow line. Lots of things end up having warnings in projects all the time. And lots of times you just look right past them, don't see them. It, it happens. So debugging is a great way to just kind of catch those things. And it's not always as simple as just the uh, a single await call was missing or something. So let's see if that fixes it. So I hit F5 and we'll go back into game and we'll click F5. And you see that it, well, it didn't seem to do anything. And the reason for that, or it still seemed to die instantly. The reason for that is because, yeah, it didn't recompile because we're attached. So I'm going to go back in and detach. Oh, may, maybe it's actually recompiled right there. Looks like it tried to recompile and reattach, but yeah, it didn't work. Let's restart it. That's what we would expect. You should have to detach and then restart the game if you want to actually apply your changes. All right, let's look at this one more time. And then we're going to look in the last section where you can see all of the data and kind of dig into what's going on with, with all of your data. So here, let's watch. Make sure that we can kill one more robot here. And then he plays his animation. So we click. He plays through the animation. Click, plays through, click, plays through. Looks good. All right, now the last thing I wanted to show you, I could probably demo better, but if you pay attention, it shouldn't be too difficult to catch on. So here I'm going to attach, and we're going to add a breakpoint in the hit method. We're going to go through and just click and shoot some of these and wait until we hit that breakpoint. Oh, I got to hit a five. It didn't actually attach that time. Good thing to do is just check and make sure that they att the attach actually happens. Let's click and hit our breakpoint here. So here you can see we've got our health is now at zero and the character's just about to die. And down here right below or right above where I typed in the expression before, you can also see this bit of data that shows you all of the active things that are um, in memory that are relevant to the current local state or the, the place that you're in on the stack in your code. So. You've got a reference to your active scene, so you can see what the scene is and see data around it, what objects are inside of the scene. 
you can see uh, whether or not it's loaded, the handle and all that, the path to it. Not super useful. The most useful stuff though is just looking at this right here. So the last variable right here is actually the enemy that we're stopped on. So if you wanna see any properties or any data about that enemy, you can just literally expand it out and check those values out. You can also go through and even change these values. Um, See set value, right click, and I can set as max health to 10. I can right click and set the current health to 1000 or whatever else I want. I can change out different object references. And you can kind of get an idea of some of the things that we can do here with this data. Just looking through it, you can see pretty much anything that you want about an about an object or about a thing that you're trying to debug. This gets really, really handy. And if I hit, watch this, Shift F11, which will step me back up a level out of the enemy and into my gun controller, you'll see that the object of this has now changed. Now it's the gun controller because I'm now at this part, part on the stack and I can see all of the data for my gun controller instead. So I can see how much ammo I've got, what the ammo images are, their transforms. I can drill down and see all of their data as well. This becomes really handy as you start to debug things, especially if you're debugging anything that's coming from an external source like a server or something else where you don't necessarily have full view of it in the inspector all the time, but it also just gets handy with anything that's getting changed runtime. You're gonna go through and view all your data. It really, really helps with debugging when you actually know what everything is and you don't have to go add a debug log for every single possible thing that you might wanna look at. So if this was helpful, again, don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you have questions or thoughts, uh, drop them down in the comments and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.